Vlad III, Prince of Wallachia, was a member of the House of Draculisti, a branch of the House of Basarab, also known, using his patronymic, as Vlad Draculilia or Vlad Dracula. He was posthumously dubbed Vlad the Impaler. He was a three-time voivode of Wallachia, ruling mainly from 1456 to 1462, the period of the incipient Ottoman conquest of the Balkans. His father, Vlad II Dracul, was a member of the Order of the Dragon, which was founded to protect Christianity in Eastern Europe. Vlad III is revered as a folk hero in Romania and Bulgaria for his protection of the Romanians and Bulgarians both north and south of the Danube. Following his raids on the Ottomans, a significant number of Bulgarian common folk and remaining boyars resettled north of the Danube to Wallachia and recognized his leadership. As the cognomen, the Impaler, suggests, his practice of impaling his enemies is part of his historical reputation. During his lifetime, his reputation for excessive cruelty spread abroad to Germany and elsewhere in Europe. The name of the vampire Count Dracula in Bram Stoker's 1897 novel Dracula was inspired by Vlad's patronymic and reputation. Name During his life, Vlad wrote his name in Latin documents as Vladislaus Draglia, by Voda Parsham Transalpinarum. His Romanian patronymic Draglia Dragali, Dragali, Draculilia, is a diminutive of the epithet Dracul carried by his father Vlad II who in 1431 was inducted as a member of the Order of the Dragon, a chivalric order founded by Emperor Sigismund in 1408. Dracul is the Romanian definite form, the ul being the suffix sale definite article. The noun drac dragon itself continues Latin draco. In modern Romanian, the word drac has adopted the meaning of devil. This has led to misinterpretations of Vlad's epithet as characterizing him as devilish. Vlad's nickname of EPEs identifies his favorite method of execution but was only attached to his name posthumously in c. 1550. Before this, however, he was known as Kaziklu Beg or Kaziklai Voivoda by the Ottoman Empire after their armies encountered his forests of impaled victims. Early life. Family Vlad was born in Siashuara, Voivodeship of Transylvania, Kingdom of Hungary, in the winter of 1431, to Vlad II Dracul, future Voivode of Wallachia. Vlad's father was the son of the celebrated Voivode Misha the Elder. His mother is unknown, though at the time his father was believed to have been married to Princess Sniajna of Moldavia and also to have kept a number of mistresses. He had two older half-brothers, Misha II in Vlad Kalagar rule, and a younger brother, Radu III the Handsome. Vlad had a half-brother also named Vlad through his father's mistress Kaltuna. She entered a monastery and her son followed in her footsteps to become Vlad the monk. In the year of his birth Vlad's father travelled to Nuremberg, where he was then vested into the Order of the Dragon, a fellowship of knights sworn to defend Christendom against the encroaching Ottomans and European heresies, such as the Hussites. During his initiation, he was given the epithet Dracul, or Dragon, by the Holy Roman Emperor Sigismund. Vlad and Radu spent their early formative years in Siashuara. During the first reign of their father, Vlad II Dracul, the voivode brought his young sons to Targovista, the capital of Wallachia at that time. The Byzantine Chancellor Mikhail Dukas showed that, at Targovista, the sons of boyars and ruling princes were well educated by Romanian or Greek scholars commissioned from Constantinople. Vlad is believed to have learned combat skills, geography, mathematics, science, languages, and the classical arts and philosophy. Dealings with the Ottoman Empire and first reign in 1436, Vlad II Dracul ascended the throne of Wallachia. Vlad II Dracul also agreed to let two of his sons stay at the Ottoman court as an extra guarantee that he remained loyal to the Ottoman Sultan. It is suspected that the young Dracula spent some time in Constantinople in the court of Constantine XI Paleologus. 
the final emperor of the Byzantine Empire. At 11 in 1442, Vlad II Dracul was beguiled into a confrontation with Sultan Mehmed II. Insensitive to the situation, Vlad II Dracul took his two sons Mercia and Dracula to meet him, only to be take prisoner. During his years as favored prisoner in Gallipoli, Vlad was educated in logic, the Quran, and the Turkish language and works of literature. He would speak this language fluently in his later years. He and his brother were also trained in warfare and horsemanship. Both were eventually released in 1448 after six years of captivity. His Turkish allies supported him by attempting to install him as voivode of Wallachia. This bold coup lasted two months when his opponents were distracted. Despite increasing his cultural capital with the Ottomans, Vlad was not at all pleased to be in Turkish hands. He was resentful and very jealous of his little brother, who soon earned the nickname Radu Selfromos, or Radu the Handsome. Radu was well behaved and quickly earned the friendship of Sultan Murad's son, Mehmet. He eventually converted to Islam and entered Ottoman service. Conversely, Vlad was defiant and constantly punished for his impudence. It has been suggested that his traumatic experiences among the Ottomans may have molded him into the sadistic man he grew up to be, especially in regards to his penchant for impaling. The death of Vlad's father Vlad II Dracul and older half-brother Misha, both politically assassinated, greatly contributed to the development of the sadistic nature of Dracula. After his escape, Dracula escaped to Moldova fearful of assassins. To learn under the tutelage of his uncle Prince Bogdan and his cousin Prince Stephen, they formed a close friendship, promising each other to help other in need. This was called into action in 1457 when Vlad helped his cousin Stephen ascend Moldavia's throne by providing 6,000 horsemen as military assistance against Petru Arin, who was deposed after two battles. Stephen of Moldavia's long-lasting reign developed into the most fierce anti-Ottoman resistance. In 1451, only three years after his adoption, Dracula was forced to flee due to Prince Bogdan's assassination. He reappeared in Transylvania and put himself under the tutelage of the mighty Hungarian military leader Janos Hunyadi and the Hungarian king, Ladislaus. Under their tutelage, Dracula learned immensely. It was in 1456 that Dracula was sent to eliminate the Turkish-friendly Vladislav II, who was the voivode of Wallachia. Dracula came to the throne as his main and important reign, second and main reign. With Hungarian help, Vlad took the throne of Wallachia from Vladislav II in 1456. In 1457, exactly a year after ascension, Vlad helped his cousin Stephen ascend Moldavia's throne by providing 6,000 horsemen as military assistance against Petru Arin, who was deposed after two battles. Stephen of Moldavia's long-lasting reign developed into the most fierce anti-Ottoman resistance. War with the Ottomans in 1459, Pope Pius II called for a new crusade against the Ottomans at the Congress of Mantua. In this crusade, the main role was to be played by Matthias Corvinus, son of John Hunyadi, the King of Hungary. To this effect, Matthias Corvinus received from the Pope 40,000 gold coins an amount that was thought to be enough to gather an army of 12,000 men and purchase 10 Danube warships. In this context, Vlad allied himself with Matthias Corvinus, with the hope of keeping the Ottomans out of the country. Later that year, 1459, Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II sent ten boys to Vlad to urge him to pay a delayed tribute of 10,000 ducats and 500 recruits into the Ottoman forces. Vlad refused, because if he had paid the tribute, as the tax was called at the time, it would have meant a public acceptance of Wallachia as part of the Ottoman Empire. Vlad, like most of his predecessors and successors, maintained the goal of keeping Wallachia independent. Vlad had the Turkish envoys killed on the pretext that they had refused to raise their hats to him by nailing their turbans to their heads. 
Meanwhile, the Sultan received intelligence reports that revealed Vlad's domination of the Danube. He sent to the Bay of Nicopolis, Hamza Bay, to make peace and, if necessary, eliminate Vlad III. Vlad E.P.'s plan to set an ambush. Hamza Bay, the Bay of Nicopolis, brought with him 1,000 cavalry and when passing through a narrow pass north of Georgia, Vlad launched a surprise attack. The Wallachians had the Turks surrounded and defeated. The Turks' plans were thwarted and almost all of them caught and impaled, with Hamza Bey impaled on the highest stake to show his rank. In the winter of 1462, Vlad crossed the Danube and devastated the entire Bulgarian land in the area between Serbia and the Black Sea. Disguising himself as a Turkish Saipai and utilizing the fluent Turkish he had learned as a hostage, he infiltrated and destroyed Ottoman camps. In a letter to Corvinus dated 2 February, he wrote, I have killed peasants, men and women, old and young, who lived at Oblusatsa and Novo Selo, where the Danube flows into the sea. We killed 23,884 Turks without counting those whom we burned in homes or the Turks whose heads were cut by our soldiers. Thus, Your Highness, you must know that I have broken the peace. Sultan Mehmed II's invasion of Wallachia In response to this, Sultan Mehmed II raised an army of around 60,000 troops and 30,000 irregulars, and in spring of 1462 headed towards Wallachia. This army was under the Ottoman general Mahmud Pasha and in its ranks was Radu. Vlad was unable to stop the Ottomans from crossing the Danube on 4 June 1462 and entering Wallachia. He constantly organized small attacks and ambushes on the Turks, such as the night attack when 15,000 Ottomans were killed. This infuriated Mehmed II, who then crossed the Danube. Radu was left behind in Targovista with the hope that he would be able to gather an anti-Vlad clique in Wallachia that would ultimately establish. Radu is the new voivode of the region. Vlad's rule falls entirely within the three decades of the Ottoman conquest of the Balkans, conquering the entire Balkans peninsula. Vlad the Impaler's attack was celebrated by the Saxon cities of Transylvania, the Italian states and the Pope, a Venetian envoy, upon hearing about the news at the court of Corvinus on 4 March, expressed great joy and said that the whole of Christianity should celebrate Vlad Epes's successful campaign. The Genoza from Kaffa also thanked Vlad for his campaign had saved them from an attack of some 300 ships that the Sultan planned to send against them. Defeat Vlad's initial victory against the Ottomans was short-lived and he soon withdrew to Moldavia leaving behind detachments in Wallachia that were overrun by the Ottoman Saipai commander Terhan Oluoma Bey who was rewarded by being appointed governor of Thessaly. Vlad's younger brother Radu Selfromos and his Janissary battalions were given the task by the Ottoman administrator Mylof Luali Bey on behalf of the Sultan, if leading the Ottoman Empire to victory. As the war raged on, Radu and his formidable Janissary battalions were well supplied with a steady flow of gunpowder and dinars. This allowed them to push deeper into the realm of Vlad III. Radu's forces finally besieged Pinari Castle, the famed lair of Vlad III. After his victory Radu was given the title Bay of Wallachia by Sultan Mehmed II. Vlad III's defeat at Pinari was due in part to the fact that the boyars, who had been alienated by Vlad's policy of undermining their authority, had joined Radu under the assurance that they would regain their privileges. They may have also believed that Ottoman protection was better than Hungarian. By September 8, Vlad had won another three victories, but continuous war had left him without any money and he could no longer pay his mercenaries. Imprisonment in Hungary in autumn of 1462, Vlad and Matthias Corvinus spent five weeks negotiating alliances and battle plans at Brasov. After believing he had gained Hungarian support for his crusade against the Ottomans, a confident Vlad started on his way home to Wallachia. 
Unbeknownst to him, there was an ambush waiting for him at Castle King's Rock, a fortress about six kilometers north of Rukar, barely inside the Wallachian state. On November 26, Vlad was captured by Matthias Corvinus' her own men and spirited away to Hungary. Neither his contemporaries nor modern-day scholars can say why exactly Matthias Corvinus shifted his loyalties and betrayed Vlad. Relatively recent research volunteers a possible explanation, though. In the early 1460s, the Hungarian king became distracted by the possibility of receiving the title of Holy Roman Emperor, and effectively tried to end the anti-Ottoman crusades in Eastern Europe. To focus on gaining power in Central Europe, he abandoned the Balkans to the Turks, a hasty and incriminating move for a supposed crusader king. In order to justify his actions, he ordered Vlad's arrest, claiming that the Wallachian prince was actually in league with the Turks. Therefore, the entire area was undeserving of his protection. Vlad was imprisoned at the Oritia fortress located at today's Podjudambo Vite village. A period of imprisonment in Visegrad near Buda followed. The exact length of Vlad's period of imprisonment is open to some debate, though indications show that it was from 1462 until 1466. Diplomatic correspondence from Buda seems to indicate that the period of Vlad's effective confinement was relatively short, his release occurring around 1466 when he married Ilona Silagi. Raju's openly pro-Ottoman policy as Voivode probably contributed to Vlad's rehabilitation. Moreover, Stefan Selmer, Voivode of Moldavia and relative of Vlad, intervened on his behalf to be released from prison as the Ottoman pressure on the territories north of the Danube was increasing. Reconquest of Wallachia, Third Reign and Death Around 1475 Vlad began preparations for the reconquest of Wallachia with Stephen V Bathory of Transylvania, mixed forces of Transylvanians, Hungarian support, some dissatisfied Wallachian boyars, and Moldavians sent by Prince Stephen III of Moldavia, Vlad's cousin. Vlad's brother, Radu the Handsome, had died many years earlier and had been replaced on the Wallachian throne by another Turkish candidate, Prince Basarab the Elder, a member of the Danasty clan. When Vlad's army arrived, Prince Basarab's army fled, some to the Turks, others in the mountains. After placing Vlad on the throne, Stephen Bathory and his forces returned to Transylvania, leaving Vlad in a very weak position. Vlad had little time to get support before a large Turkish army entered Wallachia to put Prince Basarab back on the throne. Vlad had to meet the Turks with the small forces at his disposal, which were made up of fewer than 4,000 men. Vlad III declared his third reign on 26 November 1476, where it had lasted little more than two months and thereafter he was killed. There are five variants of Vlad's death. Some sources say he was killed while fighting the Turks, surrounded by the bodies of his loyal Moldavian bodyguards. Others say he was killed by disloyal Wallachian boyars also fighting the Turks, or killed during a hunt. Still other reports claim that Vlad was accidentally killed by one of his own men. The exact date and location of Vlad's death are unknown, but he was dead by 10 January 1477. He is presumed to have died at the end of December 1476, somewhere along the road between Bucharest and Georgia. According to Bonfinius and a Turkish chronicler, Vlad was decapitated by the Turks as a trophy, and his head was sent to Constantinople, preserved in honey. After, the head was displayed on a stake as proof that he was dead. Burial Vlad's body was buried unceremoniously by his rival, Basarab Lyota, possibly a Kamana, a monastery founded by Vlad in 1461. The Kamana monastery was demolished and rebuilt from scratch in 1589. In the 19th century, Romanian historians cited of tradition, apparently without any kind of support in documentary evidence. That blood was buried at Snagov, an island monastery located near Bucharest.
To support this theory, the so-called Cantacuzino Chronicle was cited, which cites Vlad as the founder of this monastery, but as early as 1855, Alexandru Odobiscu had established that this is impossible as the monastery had been in existence before 1438. Since excavations carried out by Din Novi Rossetti in June-October 1933, it has become clear that Snagov Monastery was founded during the later 14th century, well before the time of Vlad III. The 1933 excavation also established that there was no tomb below the supposed unmarked tombstone of Vlad in the monastery church. Rossetti reported that, under the tombstone attributed to Vlad there was no tomb, only many bones and jaws of horses, in the 1970s. Speculative attribution of an anonymous tomb found elsewhere in the church to Vlad Epes was published by Simeon Savianu, a journalist who wrote a series of articles on the occasion of the 500th anniversary of Vlad's death. Most Romanian historians today favor the Kamana Monastery as the final resting place for Vlad Epes.